For today's video, I'm going to go over the new Blockbuster Part 4 quest, but first I want to go over some new features that were included in today's patch. And I'll leave a link to the patch notes in the description for those who want to go check it out. Alright, so the first thing I want to point out is that the new Bobcat Assault Rifle is going to be available in the weekly store tomorrow. And the description that came with this says that it's a fast firing weapon with excellent damage output and magazine size, but lower range than most assault weapons. And it maintains most of its accuracy while moving and firing from the hip, excelling at close range mobile skirmishes. And I believe this is the one that was labeled as a Panther originally. And again, as soon as it becomes available, we'll get some gameplay with it. And there was no information in regards to this next weapon. But while I was looking up the Bobcat on Storm Shield 1, I noticed that there was a new weapon that was added to Storm Shield 1's database. And this new one is an assault weapon called the Lynx. And it sort of looks like the FAMAS. And the description that came with it says that it's a slow firing burst assault rifle with above average headshot damage and excellent stability. But again, we didn't get any information in regards to this new Lynx assault rifle, but I did want to include it because it was added to Storm Shield 1's database, which means that we'll probably see it in the near future. There's also a new auto open doors option and the way you turn on the auto open door feature is through your settings menu and once you go to the settings all you have to do is turn it on and then click apply and once you turn it on you won't have to open any doors all you have to do is walk up to it and face it and it's going to open automatically and they also included the builder pro layout in this patch as well. Next thing I want to go over is the new Super Shielder, and this one has a much bigger shield that extends further, and it protects more husks as well as itself. And in order to kill those husks that are protected by that shield, you're going to have to go inside of the shield. I guess you could also take them out by either shooting rockets or throwing grenades inside of the shield. But yeah, the quickest way to kill them is to try to do some damage to them inside of the shield. Heroes, Trap Schematics, and Weapon Schematics can now be acquired directly from the collection book through recruitment and research. Select the item you wish to create in the collection book, and this can be an item that you already own or one that you don't own. If it can't be created, a recruit and research button will appear, and some items aren't going to be able to be created like event items, event survivors, and event defenders. It's going to cause flux in either training manuals, weapon designs, or trap designs, depending on what you're creating, in order to create this hero trap or weapon. And it's going to start out at level 1, and schematics will have randomized perks. And the other new feature in regards to the collection book is that you can now unslot items. And this is going to cost you 20 V-Bucks, and it's going to return the same item that you slotted with the same level and perks. And this will remove the collection book XP that that item granted but it's not going to reduce the level of your collection book or change what rewards you already earned. You will have to pay back that XP debt before you can continue advancing in the collection book. And there were a few other minor changes, which I'm going to run through real quick. Remote explosives, which can be found in containers around the map, now do more damage to walls. The cozy campfire trap now heals players through walls as long as they're within the 3x3 range. They increased the max ammo limit for light bullets, medium bullets, and shells and slugs. They also switched some perks around. For melee weapons, they added life leech and fire rate to the first and third perk slots, and heavy attack stamina cost reduction to the second slot. And for ranged weapons, they added the reload speed and magazine size to the first and third slots. They also changed the rewards in regards to group missions. Instead of getting a standard amount of four different types of resources, you're going to get four times the amount of a single type of resource. And this is going to allow players to better target specific resources that they're trying to acquire. And I'm willing to bet this is going to be a really good way to farm a specific type of XP. Just keep in mind when it comes to group missions that the husks are going to have a higher power level than the level of that mission. And the higher the difficulty of the mission, the higher the husk power level is going to increase. So keep that in mind when you're trying to decide which group missions you want to do. And the last thing I want to point out is that they also increase the effectiveness of explosive pistols. And those include the Firecracker, the Liberator, and Freedom's Herald, as well as the Tiny Instrument of Death, and the Zapper and Zap Zap. And there were a few other bug fixes and minor changes, but that sums up everything I wanted to go over in regards to the patch notes. Again, I'll leave a link to them in the description if you want to go check it out. Anyways, the next thing I want to go over were the Blockbuster Part 4 quest and the new Independence Day quest. 
And first we'll start off with the Independence Day quest. And for this one, you're gonna have to launch 11 fireworks and the reward is both Stars and Stripes Jonesy as well as Stars and Stripes Headhunter. And both of these heroes are survivalist soldiers. So they're just like Love Ranger Jonesy and Survivalist Jonesy. And one thing I should point out with these new Stars and Stripes heroes is that their hats and backpacks will not be in this patch but will be released in an upcoming patch. And players that own these heroes will automatically get their hats and backpacks once they're released, if you have them evolved at the correct level. So although you won't be able to get their hats and backpacks yet, we will be getting them in an upcoming patch. I've gotten gameplay with the Survivalist Soldier before, I'll leave a link to it in the description, but I do plan on getting gameplay with one of these two new heroes as well. As a matter of fact, let me know which of these two you would like to see gameplay with, either Stars and Stripes Headhunter or Stars and Stripes Jonesy. And we'll try to get that gameplay up later on today. But yeah, like I said, all you have to do is launch 11 fireworks, and I believe this can be completed in any zone. I was able to launch six fireworks on my first mission, which was a build the radar mission in the suburbs. And I launched the remaining fireworks on a rescue the survivors mission that was also in the suburbs. And again, it took me two missions to complete this quest. But yeah, that's how I completed the Independence Day quest. As for the Blockbuster Part 4 quest, there's a total of five new quests. There's three new quests on the 10th page and two new quests on the 11th page. And this first quest is called Earthquakes, and for this one you're going to have to deploy 5 remote seismographs. And the reward for this one is 250 Blockbuster tickets. And I believe this one can be completed on any zone. But the mission I used to complete it was a build the radar mission that was located in the suburbs. And I was able to complete it within just one mission. All you have to do is just explore the map till you see the yellow exclamation marks. And then walk up to it and deploy the seismograph. The second new quest is called Lookout. And for this one you're going to have to deploy 7 C-Bots. And the reward is 100 V-Bucks. And this one did take me a couple of missions to complete, but the mission that I used was a rescue the survivors mission that was located in the suburbs. And just like with the first one, you just have to explore the map till you see the yellow exclamation marks, walk up to it, and then deploy the C-Bot. So that's how I completed the second one. The third quest is called Don't Blink, and for this one you're going to have to collect 5 C-Bots, and the reward is 250 tickets. And I completed this one on a Rescue the Survivors mission that was located in the suburbs, and it only took me one mission to complete it. And all you have to do is just explore the map to see the yellow exclamation marks, and walk up to it and collect the C-Bot. Now the fourth quest is called Meteoric Fall, and for this one you're going to have to destroy the meteorite. And the reward for this is either Demolitionist Bull, Shotgunner Buzz, Piercing Lotus Luna, or Double Agent Vaughn. And all of these heroes are legendary. And in order to complete this mission, you're going to have to go to the zone that's called Visit the Crater. And once you go there, you're going to see a mission called Destroy the Meteor. And that's how you start this mission. And once you start the mission, you're going to have to travel to the crater, deploy four lasers, and then defend the lasers while they destroy the meteor. Once you deploy all four lasers, you're only going to have two minutes to build around each of them. So if you're playing solo or if you don't have a full lobby, I would recommend that you try to build around the lasers before you deploy all four of them. Because again, you'll only have two minutes to build around them. Now, once you've deployed all four lasers, you will have to defend them while they destroy the meteor. And they will destroy the meteor faster if you're able to successfully defend all four lasers. If the husk end up destroying one of the lasers, then you're not going to be able to destroy the meteor as quickly. But yeah, you can have some of the lasers destroyed and still complete the mission. When I did it, we had three of the lasers destroyed, but we were able to defend the last laser and it completely destroyed the meteor. But yeah, that's how we completed this one. If y'all would like to see gameplay of this mission, let me know in the comments below. And the last blockbuster quest is called Post Credits. And for this one, you're going to have to search five mailboxes and the reward is 100 V-Bucks. And I don't believe it matters which zone you do this quest in, but I completed it on a Rescue the Survivors mission that was located in the suburbs, and it only took me one mission to complete it. But for this one, all you have to do is just explore the map till you see the yellow exclamation marks, and then walk up to them and search the mailboxes. And that sums it up for the last Blockbuster quest. I'll be sure to leave a link to a walkthrough of all of the Blockbuster quests in the description below. And yeah, let me know what you think about today's patch, as well as the new quest and new rewards. And again, let me know which of the Stars and Stripes heroes you would like to see gameplay of. Anyways, that'll do it for this one. I hope y'all found the video useful, and thanks for watching.